Hello Art 2 students. So all that this video is going to do is just show you my example pieces because remember you will be using your stencil to just create your pattern like this example which is just the pattern over and over again. I'll zoom in so you guys can see. Remember this one is a translation or a slide. So each of your stencils just moves across and or up and down. You have the translation slide. You have the rotation, which is this one, where everything pivots around one point. So if you look here, my stencil is actually pivoting around that point. So if I were to put my stencil down, for instance, right here, then I'm going to see that stencil pivot around this point. So if I put my finger here and just pivot in my stencil, it falls right in here and locks in. Same thing if I go to the next set. It's going to just pivot and lock, pivot and lock, so on and so forth. So that is our rotation or translation. And then the other example is your reflection. Let me find an example of that one for you. And that is where your stencil will actually flip. So for instance, on my stencil for this one, I've got my stencil here and then instead of sliding it or pivoting it, I have to actually flip it. And then it goes. So I'm gonna flip it on the other side and it goes and flip. So you can actually see exactly how that stencil flips. The next thing you're going to be doing is deciding within your stencil, your tessellated pattern, if you want to create some sort of design that goes in each of those shapes. So for instance, on this one, I used tracing paper to design an eagle face to go within each of my shapes. And because this one is a reflection, I can use both sides of the tracing paper, which actually saves you a step because typically when you use tracing paper, you have to trace on one side and then trace your whole design on the back side in order to be able to use it. With the reflection transformation, you can actually use both sides of your tracing paper so you don't need to necessarily reapply graphite like I did on this one. When I was doing this example, because this was a rotation, all of my stencil had to be going the same direction every time I used it. So I had to actually just add more graphite to the back and then repeat the pattern as desired. So you can see on this example, my sort of eagle example, I've repeated the entire tracing paper in each shape. And then on this example, what I did was sort of repeat parts of it in some, all of it in other. And then if you look sort of here, you can see that this example, or no, this example, sorry, has all of the detail and every single little bit of that bird. This one is missing part of the wing. This one is missing part of the wing and part of the back. And then this one just has the eye. And then in other places throughout, I just use parts and pieces of my tracing paper as desired and or as fits because sometimes it does just go off the page. So then my next step would be to, design, to decide if I want to outline the lines within the actual design here because I can use an ultra fine tip sharpie or a colored pencil or anything and I can go over the eyes and the beaks and the wings and the beaks and the eyes here before I start adding color or I could just go ahead and start adding color. Now personally for me I would probably want to use watercolor on this example and remember since these are Bristol board you can use watercolor. It's not the first choice of medium but it does definitely work. I would want to use watercolor and pen and ink. So on this one, I would probably outline all of my detail. On this one, I might use acrylic, in which case I will not necessarily outline because acrylic paint is more opaque and I'm going to get 
stiff, firm edges just from the paint itself. And then my other example here on the black paper is a reflection transformation as well. And what I have done is actually used a white and a gold pen to go around and kind of go over all of my designs. And then the next thing would be to add colored pencil to actually color each of those birds and make each one stand out a little bit more within that pattern. And I will say on this black one, I tested quite a few different pens that I have in terms of outlining and have found that the white and the gold definitely work the best. The green, like you see here, works okay. But over the weekend, I'm going to see if I can find some more pens for us to be able to use. That way, if anyone is deciding to work on black paper, right now I think we just have one or two students who have decided they want to use black paper, you'll have more options in terms of outlining your patterns and your designs. Now on this one, you can definitely still use tracing paper. It does work but it is a little bit trickier. There's an extra little step in there, but it's absolutely doable. So if you are working on black paper and you are using tracing paper and need help with that, definitely let me know. Otherwise, your main goal for Monday of next week for everybody, regardless of whether you are a black day or a gold day, your goal is to be ready to start adding color, adding designs, using tracing paper, that kind of stuff by Monday. So here is an example of a finished piece that I did last year, actually. So I know that it doesn't quite all fit on the page, but you can see that it is a slide. It is a translation. So this sort of boat pattern that you see just moves. It goes up. And it, hurts. it goes over, over, over. It all interlocks within itself, but it's not rotating and it's not reflecting. So it's going in the same direction. And then I have chosen to use cool colors in some of the spaces, warm colors in others, patterns in some, and then shading to make it look like an actual boat. And then in a couple places, I just left it white. So the exact way, once again, that you finish out your pattern is up to you, but you do want to make sure that it looks finished, that it looks complete, and that it is very nice and neat. That's why we are working relatively small for these projects, so that you have plenty of time to devote to intricate details and making all of your designs as smooth as possible.